series of talks. And today, I, first I, I explain about the convergence of the relation I, polyno, uh, power series. And secondly, uh, I will explain a relationship with uh, quiver representations. And finally, I will explain in the case of Calabria threefold, this relation uh, come from uh, cyclic derivative of superpotential. So, the, and yeah. So first, I, so let me remind me. So, so F is a coherent sheaf on algebraic variety X, and I, I consider non-commutative deformations of F over Artinia ring. And the Wasser deformation is uh, constructed. And the base, base ring is called deformation ring. So this is in a pro object of this category. And uh, this is given in the following way. So this is pro object. This is so tangent, uh, no, not tangent, uh, ten, tensor algebra, completed tensor algebra over this extension module divided by some ideal determined by the image like this. So this is, this is the obstruction module and this is the Im image determined by the A, A infinity structure on, on so MN. Sorry, this is star. A infinity structure is something like this. Yeah, of course, a infinity structure has more, more component, but if I restrict to extension one, so degree one part, then this is like this, and m is just formal sum of all infinity maps. So this is from tensor algebra of extension one to extension two, and this one is just a pullback of this map, and then the image of this vector space give you some linear subspace of this, and two-sided ideal generated by this is the uh, so relation idea. And in the previous lectures, this was just a formal sum. And today, I want to discuss about the convergence, so uh, convergence. So in order to do this, I, I have to restrict the base field to be C. Yeah. And moreover, I should take not only injective resolution, but projective resolution in order to calculate the cohomology. So injective resolution is better, so it, it, uh, it globalizes easily and works without any, you know, any, so the injective, injective chief has no, no cohomology at all, but projective locally free, locally free resolution. So locally free resolution itself doesn't give, give me the cohomology, but I need more of a Dolbo resolution, Dolbo cohomology. So I need one more component in order to calculate the cohomology. So the procedure is like this. So uh, that F has the projective resolution is, ah, so sorry, locally free resolution is like this. Yeah, maybe P minus N. So P, 
all, all of these are locally free sheaves. And uh, so in order to do this, I, I need all, also assume that X is smooth project. So if, if X is projective, then I have locally free resolution. But it can be in infinitely long. But if X is smooth, then the locally free resolution terminates at the, at the dimension of X. And moreover, so for Dolbock cohomology, so I need Poincare resolution. So for this purpose, I need a smoothness, really. So uh, without smoothness assumption, I cannot uh, talk about the following things. So especially, uh, this, this restricts some validity of the uh, statement. At any rate, to today I assume X is, uh, K is C and X is smooth projective. Then, so if, if FR is a uh, deformation, so any deformation, ah, so for, for this, so, uh, so how, how to construct projective resolution? So let's take M, a positive integer, such that F twisted to M, so this by, by hyperplane section bundle, then this is generated by global sections. And moreover, I assume that H, HP of FM is zero for P positive. So for given F, always there, there is such F. And then, so since FM is generated by global sections, O minus M to some, to some direct sum, subject to F. Yeah. So this is the first step. So this is P0. And then I, I take the kernel, kernel of this subjection. And then the kernel, again, uh, so maybe I need to take M sufficient. So yeah, I need to apply the, the same thing uh, so, so that M is maybe bigger. Anyway, so by this procedure, I, I can take locally free resolution. And since Fx is smooth, so this, this member is automatically locally free. Now, so let, let F to the R be a deformation of a R. So R is R and ring. So then, so this, these sections, so H naught of FRM, there is natural map like this. And this is subjective by this balancing cohomology. So this, this implies that there, there are sections, so maybe Maybe here I put n and section S1 to Sn uh, lifted to S1 tilde to Sn tilde. So there is subjective map R tensor to H naught. FRM. Yeah. And so in this way, there is, this is O module. O, as OX module, sorry. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Hmm. What is this? So uh, first, there are n, n global sections. So I have this map. 
But uh, this has R module structure, so I have also this map, yeah, this subjection. And then, so by repeating the same argument, I have the FR has uh, locally free resolution of the form. So F FR is P, ah, sorry, R te tensor P0, R tensor P1, and so on. So this is very similar to the case of injective resolution, but uh, the, uh, the direction of arrows are just opposite. And then, so this p dot replace f, but uh, this doesn't give you the cohomology, so I need more, so let c0 dot, so maybe Q and I. This is just, so, C infinity zero Q form. On with a va value with value PI. And th this will give you the durable resolution of of f, and and what I need is a is c so maybe c zero q and from p i p i plus p and so p plus q is k. And all I, maybe four. Oh. P plus Q is I. Okay. Yeah. So this is the um, this is the DG algebra. DG algebra. So in the in the previous argument, I used injective resolution. So A, AK was just mm, no, just this PI P, no 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 P, no P I I I I, I, I plus K. So this was. Uh, uh, the double complex constructed from uh, to, to, total complex of the double complex constructed from the from the injective region. So, so I have one more ingredient here, and then so what is D in in this case? So D A is D bar plus. So maybe it is better to so like this. So D A P B A, A Q B P. So where A A Q is zero Q form, zero Q form, and B P is belongs to. H zero. This is holomorphic section. Pi plus P. holomorphic. This is delta A Q times B P plus minus one to the Q of A Q D P B. D plus minus one P plus Q of A Q B P D. 
where d d this d is a uh, is the so differential of the projective resolution. So I have uh, three components. In the case of uh, injective resolution, I, I need two components. But uh, I need, since I have three components, here and here and here, I need uh, three. And these, these signs are just, uh, so they exchange the order. So differential is degree one. So degree one and degree q, and if they are changed, then I need uh, q's minus one to the q. And then differential goes afterwards. And here, differential go at the, at the end, and the, they exchange to degree p plus q, so this is a sign. So this, this is a, a correct sign for the differential, and then one can prove that dA square is zero. And so by taking homolo homology, so H, 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 HK of A dot is equal to extension K of FF. Yeah. So this is the Dolbock homology theory to, 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 uh, to calculate the coherent C, uh, homology of coherent C. So the, why I needed this Dolbock homology instead of uh, injective resolution? So injective resolution is too big, and uh, I cannot put metric. But here, uh, these are <coughs> vector bundles. So I can put uh, usual Hamishan metric, and then I can use L2 theory and so on. So in order to estimate the for the in order to the estimate for the convergence. Yeah. So this is uh, the Dolbock homology. Yeah. And then, on so wha wha how, how to describe the uh, deformation? This is the same. So if I have y in A1, then, so P, so, ah. so R cross P1 to R cross P0, yeah, and here D plus dA plus y. So then this co-kernel, co So this is the uh, deformation of F. So this should be FR, so flat over R, if and only if, Y satisfies Mara Kalta equation. Yeah. And uh, from A1 to H1 of A, so this A1 is DG algebra. And if I take cohomology, then I have A infinity algebra. And the Maurer Carlton equation here, Maurer Carlton is transformed to Maurer Carlton equation in this A infinity algebra. And this is just Mn n is uh, 2 to infinity of x is 0 where x is fn y n, n is uh, to infinity. So fn is the infinitely many component of infinity algebras from A to HYA. So in this way, I can transform the Maurer-Kalta equation 
to infinity algebra. And now, so this give, give the relation idea of the Vassar uh, deformation ring. So the question is that these, ah, sorry. So these, so also here. So th uh, these uh, operators on the on the vector space uh, have some bounded norm. So I, I define what is the convergence. So convergence. What what, is, what does this mean? The meaning is that. Uh, this so this is operator from extension one to extension two. This has bounded norm C n for there exists some constant and F n also constant and G n G n is G n was also used. This this is a converse. Uh, infinity morphism, and also, so these these are operator norms, and these operator norms, in, for with respect to some norm, is uh, bounded, and then the sum sum like this converge in some sense. For, so here I consider the only non-commutative, non-commutative. Uh, so, yeah, like this. So he, this is just the transpose, so the, also the bounded norms. And, so, and each coefficients are given by mn. And so if, the, if they have bounded norm, then so the, this uh, relation idea uh, converges. But uh, uh, so so of course this is this is a non non commutative power series series so there is uh, no strict sense of convergence so it is non commutative but uh, if you take just a commutative quotient so maximal commutative quotient so or abelianization then they are really convergent. So because the uh, co coefficient of the power series are bounded like this, then they are convergent. But by, by your theory, wait, now that there's one and also there's many. Hmm? The ah, so this, this, so the, the, the radius depends on C, yeah, of course, inverse, inverse of C. So infinity algebra structure is on extension one, yeah, like this. So this is the non-commutative coordinate ring of this finite dimensional vector space. So in this finite dimensional vector space, I'm considering formal power series ring, a formal power series defined by this. And they are convergent. So first of all, uh, I need to take a suitable norm on A1, so uh, A. So on A, I choose norm. This is Sobolev norm. So this is D summation D alpha F. Uh, square and alpha is up to k, so something like this. So this is uh, this is a norm of f, and d is a differential, so partial differential. 
partial differentiation up to order k. And k is bigger than dimension x. So I fix this k. And uh, up to order k, I take all the differential, partial differentials. And uh, take summation and L to norm. So is this, is this OK? Maybe L2 is here. Yeah. So. Hmm? Uh, square, yes. So if I take k, k is 0, then this is usual L2 norm. But usual L2 norm uh, does not behave well for the product. So if I take this one, then actually Fg, so two product of two functions, is something like uh, C. I, I have this kind of uh, uh, so formula if I take the Sobolev norm. It's in, so, so in order to get this kind of, so C is some universal constant, so like this. Yeah, and if if uh, if if uh, L is operator, so from A to A, and then norm of L is just so super, maximum or supremum of LF divided by ah sorry. For f is one, so this is. Uh, this. Uh, uh, f square. Hmm? Really? This. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So sorry. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe. Yeah, like this. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So, so uh, this is the operator norm. Yeah. And this is the infinite dimensional space. And if, if I take the completion, then this becomes Banach space. So essentially, this is, I'm considering Banach DG algebra. And for, so Banach, Banach space, so, so this should, all, all operators should be bounded. Yeah. So Banach algebra, so not only as an infinity dimensional vector space, I have multiplication and differentiation. And the multiplication is bounded and uh, differential also bounded in some sense. Yeah. So it, it seems that the, uh, Actually, I, I'm not very sure about uh, analysis, but uh, it's, uh, it's written <laughs> in the textbook like this. So. OK. So but, but hmm? the case product. Well, what is product? Well, product. Just, to, just two. Just, just add commutative function product? Huh? No, so. This is uh, algebra, so product is just two elements. But our case is infinity and n. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, the, the product is just uh, two. Yeah. M1? Hmm? No, no, no. You, you will see. There is no infinite product. Okay. So this is algebra. Okay, so then, so I, I need a harmonic theory. So, so if we, since X is projective, X has k metric. And so using this, so A 
has uh, some ha harmonic integral theory. So there is projection to so there, there is some projection like this. So and there is this is inside A. So this is harmonic forms. So remember, A, A was like this. So th this is holomorphic vector bundle. So holomorphic vector bundle valued zero Q forms. And so and differential was uh, defined by this. And so and the cohomology space is the, so differential, so closed the, uh, module boundary, but so this this is uh, just a sub quotient of A, but you can find harmonic representatives inside A. And so how how to do this? So so D A has a joint D A star with respect to some metric. Maybe I think this is L2 metric. And then the Laplacian is defined like this. Yeah. And then H A is just kernel of Laplacian. So that's, that's why it is called harmonic forms. And these harmonic forms represent all the cohomologies. But the, uh, this depends on the elite metric, so I fixed Kela metric here. Then there is green, fun green operator. Which is. Uh, commutative with the differentials and also it's a joint. And I define H to be D star G. Ah, and also there is one equal P plus uh, what was that? P plus delta G. And this is equal to P plus HD plus DH. So del delta was DD star, and D and D star are com commutative with G. So if you put this way, then you have this equality. So this is uh, harmonic integration theory, but uh, this this expression this means that one is homotopic to p, and the homotopy is h. So this is more algebraic formulation. So this is usual formulation, and this is more algebraic formulation. And, and it, so it is known by analysis, so I, I don't know how to prove it, but this is also bounded operator. So now I'd like to apply this to the AVT structure. So a, Mn is the sum of Mn t, where t is a tree. So from, so 
So there are n element go to one uh, bottom, and and on on the way. So like this. Yeah. So if n is four, then one of the tree is like this, and each tree. I take so first. This is i, 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 and p, and this is m2, h, m2, h, m2. So each for each uh, each confluence, I take m2. M2 is just a product. M, so these these m2 are just a product of the uh, this algebra and H is this homotopy. So for inner but inner inner H, I I have apply H, and so so for example this this diagram says that M four of x y z t is equal. First x x y is is multiplied, and then take so sorry maybe x y and then h, and then x uh, z and again h, and then t and p. So this is. This is uh, not M4, M4T. M4. So, uh, so for this tree, M4 is like this. And M4 is just, just uh, the sum of all such trees. And there are many trees, but uh, we know the number of uh, trees. So, number of three is equal to Two n minus two factorial divided by n minus one factorial n factorial, and this is smaller than four n minus one. And so each tree there is some number of operators. So here, 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 but it is fixed. And it, for each operator. Uh, so there is some constant. So they are bounded operators. Op operator norm multiplies. And also the, uh, the number of uh, trees should be multiplied. But uh, any anyway, uh, altogether, the, the, the operator norm of Mn is bounded by some constant. Yeah. So in this way, I can prove that Mn is bounded, in, in, so convergent in this way. And also, in the case of, in the case of, so this is M case, but in the case of F, I, I need something different. So I need homotopy here in order to get F. So in the case of M, I start with homology, and the homology injects to uh, the DG algebra. So homology is identified as harmonic forms. So come DG algebra, and this is still DG. But the degree, yeah. So if I start with degree one, then this is degree two, but homotopy decreases by degree one again, and then degree one, degree two, degree one, and degree two. So the the result is degree two for Mn. But in the case of F, Fn, degree is one, because here uh, degree drops by one. So very similar method, I can prove that Fn and also Gn are bounded. And this is the proof 
of the convergence. Yeah, so I, I use the coordinates for the convergence. So uh, one, can, one can look at different ways. So if you like a uh, more point, point set, then so x1, ff, so somehow, yeah, actually this is the, the so this is, there, there are infinitely many polynomial map like this. So this is not a linear map, but the polynomial map infinitely many. So the, these are MNs. And so M, MN, so MN. And the kernel is the, is, this is the uh, de deformation space, uh, space, a uh, parameter space, parameter space of deformation. This is the uh, point set. Thing. So of course uh, this is uh, a little bit ambiguous. So I took the just a dual approach. So uh, instead of uh, point set, I I took the coordinate ring and uh, the defining equation. So this is uh, anyway so algebraic method to describe the parameter space of the deformation. So in the more, more classically analytic analytic description is the following. So a one go to a two. So the, both are Banach analytic space and. If I take completion, and, and there is some some uh, analytic map, and so maybe this is F, and so zero set is is a space of deformations, but this is redundant. So I need to uh, one needs to s take slice. Some slice, so maybe h. This is finite dimensional vector space. This is slice, and this is parameter space of the formations. And this is a, a classical proof of the existence of Bachelet deformation. So in, in order to do this, you have to develop the theory of uh, Banach analytic manifold and so on, ba Banach analytic variety, and then taking slides and so on. So that, uh, of course, uh, so intuitively, this is very simple, but you have to develop a lot of things. So anyway, you have to develop some kind of theorem to, to make it rigorous. Okay, this is this is the first part. Uh, a, a little bit early, but I would like to have a break, and then the second part I talk about quiver representation. So I I like to start the second part. So quiver is a very elementary subject, but it it it, it appears in many uh, phases, and uh, it's uh, uh, useful. So Q is quiver. So it has a set of vertices, V, and the set of edges, E. And so and there's morphism, uh, target morphism, and source morphism from H to vertex, the same. So this is target and source. Hmm? Source. Is this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
and the or a finite set. And and then so what is representation? So R is representation of Q quiver. This has dimension so at at each vertex, so V1, V2, V3, you you take some uh, vector space, U1, U2, U3, so so B, VI corresponds to UI, so K vector space, also maybe finite dimensional, and so each edge for homomorphism, so UE. So each edge E go to some UE inside from UI to UJ. And that's it. So there is no relation. So usually quiver means quiver without relation. So U is so U so and the DI is dimension of ui for each edge uh, vertex vi and this is d is called the dimension vector so all set set of all di's and then r is in the space of representation with dimension d so if I fix the dimension d, but I, if I move the homomorphisms, then this is just the product of home of u source of e. Actually, this is source of e to target of e. U target of e for all e in the set of edge. So the, the representation, that the set of all representations with a fixed dimension vector is identical to the product of all homomorphism from these vector spaces. So this is affine space. If I fix a dimension vector, then the set of representations is just affine space. So let me give you an example. One is a simple representation. <coughs> what is a simple representation or irreducible representation? This is just uh, <coughs> there is only one one vertex. So with u i zero, a u i is equal to k or zero. I is i zero and otherwise. So this is just one non-zero dimension vector. And EU, uh, UE, so UE is zero for all E. So this is the simplest representation. So only at one vertex there is no just one dimensional vector space and otherwise nothing. And the semi-simple representation is just direct, so I, I, I call this SI0. SI0 and DI, SI, DI. So this is just a direct sum of simple representations. And that corresponds to U, E is zero for all E. If all morphisms, uh, zero, then this is semi simple, if and only. So this is. Then, what is non trivial extension? So, non trivial extension. So, suppose that there is vertex one to vertex two, and there is just one edge. Then I have an extension. 
So S two and maybe R representation. This one. So both sides are simple representation, and in the middle, this is non-trivial, uh, non-simple example, uh, non-simple representation with dimension vector d1 is equal to d2 is 1. And uh, how this uh, exact sequence is? So at the v1, there is 0, 1, so k. K and that V2, this is K, uh, K and E, UE is non zero. So zero, zero. And this is E. So this is commutative diagram of exact sequences. And this is UE. And this is 0, 0, like this. So this is uh, exact sequence of uh, representation. So there is a following simple lemma. So R is is a successive extension of simple representations if and only if if and only if the action so q q acts near potent R. So th that means that so E no U E one U E two U E N is zero for for all E one to E N if N is bigger than N zero. So that if there is some fixed number, fixed number n zero, such that the the multiple of any any multiple of number more than n zero becomes zero. So this is called the nilpotent, and nilpotent representation is equivalent to the extension of simple representations. So for, for example here. So U, U E is zero, but the U E square is zero because anyway E cannot E cannot so yeah actually U E U E dash is zero if uh, target of E dash is different from source of E, otherwise you cannot compose. And for example, so I just to prove this lemma, this is uh, quite evident, but maybe it is to illustrate the definition, I prove this lemma. So for example, if Si R R dash, so I suppose that R is successive extension of simples. So R dash is successive extension, and SI is a simple. And then, so. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. So that's why I I use assumption. So. Uh, 
Yeah. So if if you you so one is zero on R dash, but U is all U is zero on SI, and then if you extend one more, so for U U n plus one is zero on R. Yeah, just by such sequence. So this is from up to down. And if you have a nilpotent representation, then so this is this direction and this direction is that if we have nilpotent direction, then so there's some kernel of the last the last homomorphism always. So the kernel of of all homomorphism, so all is not zero. So this will be this. Yeah? So if you take the the intersection of all kernels, and yeah, so like this. Uh, is it uh, okay? Yeah. yeah. So this was the representation of a quiver. Okay, then I I want to consider some special quiver, so called the X quiver. So let Fi be a simple collection. So each each fi is a uh, uh, coherent sheaf. Simple collection means endomorphism ring of the sum. So i is one to r is equal to k to the r. So in another words, home of not e f. Fi to Fj is equal to K to the delta Ij. So this is a simple collection. And I want to consider non-commutative deformation of a simple collection. Now. So actually F, F is just a direct sum. And I want to consider non-commutative deformation of the direct sum. So for this simple collection, I attach a quiver, which is called X quiver, the following. So vertex is just V1 to VR. So each component corresponds to vertex. Then what is the edges? So EIJ is the set of edges uh, going from VI to VJ. And this is a basis of X to 1 FF star. Yeah, this is, this is X quiver. Yeah, uh, I, I forgot to define the quiver algebra. So quiver algebra. So Q, uh, KQ. So Q is a quiver, and for each quiver, I can define quiver algebra. This is just the sum of all non non trivial paths. E one. E. I n e i n minus one e one for all n and such that target of e i uh, e i j is equal to source of e i j plus one. So, so th these are just uh, composable composable edges. So the the set, 
So this is just a uh, direct sum of all composable edges. So this is Weber algebra. And by concatenation, you get uh, algebra structure on this algebra. So this is non-commutative algebra. And the so this is formal quiver algebra. This is just uh, the same. So same. Just, just I not not just direct sum, but direct product. Then I get uh, com completed completed quiver algebra, uh, formal quiver algebra. So for, for example, in this quiver algebra, so K, KQ is just a tensor algebra of X to R, FF star. And formal fever algebra is just formal completion of it. And this was the so uh, so the, if you divide by some idea, then you get uh, the deformation algebra. So this is what I need needed for describing deformation algebra almost. Ah, but sorry, this is K to the R. Uh, no, 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 this is uh, thi this is a little bit strange part. So, if I take that this one, then I need K n plus. So that only the degree zero part is different. So, so this one has degree zero part k to the r, but this one has degree zero part k, just only k. But otherwise, otherwise this so restricted product is just a tensor product. So what's k n? K, k, k r, k r. This is r. So r, r is a number of number of vertices. So, so E, so for example, E one, E two can be composed only the target is equal to the source. So this is composable, and this is equivalent to saying that this is over K to the R. So if you if you have E1 here and E2 here, and you get the same uh, same edge. So this is the uh, tensor product over KR, the same. So, but uh, at the degree zero part, this quiver algebra has only one dimensional vector space, not K to the R. So this is the difference. So this is almost the same. So, I, I, well, usually may, maybe one can say that this bar, if I take bar, then this is the same. So, such graded algebra, graded algebra, so in, in B is equal to K plus B bar, like this. So, in the positive degree part is denoted by B bar, with B bar. And then, the positive degree parts are the same. Only the degree zero part are different. No, no, actually, usually just K. This is uh, common. Yeah, but uh, if you take K to the R, then this is just a tensor algebra. So it is almost the same. And then they are divided by uh, relations. 
determined by the by determined by uh, the infinity structure. So now I give you one example, so which is already given before, but I, I'd like to present the calculation more precisely. So this is the same example I considered before. So x is just two lines. x, y is zero inside P2. And so f x is all of x is zero. And f y is all of y is zero. So this is a line. And f is just fx plus fy. And then there, is, there are extensions fx to o, 1, 0, and fy over x, and fy. These are only non-trivial two-pointed deformations. Yeah. So this is a line bundle on, on x with degree 1, 0. And this is 0, 1. So this is, both are invertible shape, but uh, different degrees on each component. Okay. So we, we had this already. And this gives you also locally free resolution. For example, fx plus ox01, ox10, because the kernel, kernel is fy, and but fy is covered by invertible shift like this, so I have this. So this actually, in this case, locally free resolution do not terminate because x is singular. Okay, then I can calculate extension, extension shift. This is equal to fx zero or p p p p is just x is y is zero. Zero or p zero and so on. So this is also a periodic extension fx fy is equal to zero or p zero or p and so on. So this can be calculated by, by using this locally free resolution. Just take, take home from this resolution to fx or fy, I get these things. Okay. And then if I take the hypercohomology, and this is just k0, K zero and so on, and extension f x f y is zero k zero k and so on. So, so for example, so th there are two vertices, so f x f y, and f x. Fx to Fx, there is uh, one dimensional homomorphism. And Fx to Fy, there is no homomorphism. So this is exact, so this part exactly says that they are simple connection. Yeah. And how about the edge? edge? So from x to y, uh, x to x, there is nothing. So there is no loop here. But from x to y, there is one. So there is. One edge, E1. This is E1. And oh, similarly, there's E2, opposite direction. So this is the quiver, so X quiver corresponding to this uh, situation.
And then, so, then I'd like to consider the relations. So, x1, ff, maybe fx, fy, plus x1, fy, fx, goes to extension 2, fx, fx. So this is one dimensional, one dimensional, and one dimensional, uh, because this, this one is x, x2. This is obstruction space. And uh, I, I can check that, so this is E1, E2. Go to non-zero element, so W, non-zero. So I can check that the result is non-zero. Yeah. So what, what does this mean? So this means now, th this is just M2. M2 was just a product of uh, extensions. So M2 star of W is E1, e, sorry, E2, E1. Yeah. So that, this is a relation. So relation, so relation is there is generated by E2, E1, and also similarly E1, E2. So if I take Fx, uh, Fy, Fy. So the result is So quiver, quiver algebra is just k e1 e2 and the, so relation k e1 e2 divided by e1 e2 and e2 e2 e1 is just k e1 Hmm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is not. Yeah. It's divided by e1 square, e2 square, I think. Because uh, e1, 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 e2 is composable, but e1, e1 is not composable. So if I take the two-pointed quiver, ah, so, so the, yeah, this is, maybe this is better to say this. Uh, yeah, sorry. Divided by Sorry. Uh, this is one pointed deformation, sorry. So if I if I take the ordinary quiver algebra, mm, no no. This is tensor, tensor I should I should take tensor algebra. So this is just tensor. Tensor algebra. Tensor algebra x, x to one f f. Then this, and so this is also tensor algebra. So this was one pointed deformation. Yeah, and if I consider two pointed deformation. Then this is k e 
e1 e2 divided by e1 square e2 square. And then the mod mod but but I, I need to take quiver algebra. So this is so this is quiver algebra of without any restriction of the composition. But this this one is quiver algebra. Algebra by divided by relations e1, e2, e2, e1 is equal to k e1, e2 divided by e1 square, e2 square, e1, e2, 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 and this is equal to k, 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 t, k, t, t square. So. This was what I uh, explained in the in the in the first lecture, I think. So this is a uh, relation to quiver algebra. Yeah. Then I'd like to explain the extension. So how why Quiver algebra, uh, x quiver should take x to one instead of x to zero. So this is, this is something like this. So yeah. So suppose the, so I I started with simple collection, and then so there is extension of sheaf f two extension f1. So this is extension of C. Then this corresponds to a morphism x in x1 of f1 to f2. Yeah. And then this corresponds to u e equal x e for e in x one f one f two star. So for all for all element e so x determines the homomorphism like this, and this is a, this is a representation. So this is representation, and this representation is extension of S two R S one. <coughs> so in this in this process, extension of sheaf is translated into extension of simple module, uh, simple representation. So x, x, x quiver is, uh, at least in the case of a simple collection, they reflect honestly the extension process of the, yeah, of sieve and the representation. But uh, this this uh, this correspondence doesn't take into account of uh, any obstruction. So this is a first step extension. So first step extension, there is no obstruction. But if you want to repeat this, the higher extension, there are obstruction space. So and then you need to consider quiver with relations. Quiver with relations, uh, like. Like this, so these are relations coming from x to two space. Okay, so finally, I'd like to explain in the case of Calabria threefold, and then how the relation 
comes from super potential. Cross-section carabial three four. So here I assume that this X is smooth, projective, three-dimensional, and moreover canonical shift is isomorphic to the structure shift. So under this assumption, the deformation theory is very special. So, so let EI star is X to one of FF. So F, F is a simple collection. F is simple collection. So this is basis. But in the case of, yeah, actually this is maybe A, B. So each, each base is coming from this. So actually X1 FF is just the sum AB of X1 FA FB. So this has KR bimodule structure. And each, each base comes from uh, one of the components. Okay. And then I define AI1, IN minus 1, I equal MN minus 1, EN1 star, EN, EI1. I n minus one star and E I star. So, in, so this is in x x two star, and this is in x one star. But by taking inner product, what I get is x. 3 FF star, but uh, by, by duality, this is isomorphic to X0 FF. So, and the, he, this is KR, and of course, there is K for augmentation to K for projection. And, and by this way, I define inner product. So this, here I, I used this Calabria threefold assumption. So this is in K. Then, uh, then M N minus one of E I one star EI n minus one star is equal to AI one I n minus one I EI star. No, no, not EI, EI. So EI is X one element, but this is, I, I can identify the dual space of X2 because there is inner product and the dual space of X2, X2 is X, mm, uh, dual space of X2, so th this is X2, X, X, uh, yeah, X2 star, X2 star, X2 star, yeah, that's it, that's it. So if I take MN minus one star, of EI and summation, then this is just, this is just AI1 
i n minus one i hmm? yeah o e i one star e i n minus one star so uh, this m uh, the relation so the generator of relation idea is expressed by using this coefficient yeah so so i want to describe this uh, coefficient now so there is there is a very nice lemma with acyclicity of the coefficient. So this is proposition. So m n minus one, a one to a n minus one, a n is equal to m n minus one of a two, a n, a one. So if I permute this a1 to an, a1, an are just e1, e, e, i1, and so on. Yeah, star and so on. And I, I star and so on are too, too complicated. So that just I, so this is e, e, i1 star, not a1. Yeah. So, so if I ch change cyclically, the inner product doesn't change. This is uh, strange. But the uh, inner, <laughs> inner product. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 so inner product is just uh, so take product and uh, trace map. Or uh, if you use differential form, then this is just in, uh, take product and integration. Okay, so how to prove this? So mn of a1 to an is equal to some plus minus of h n minus one h n minus one a one to a n minus one a n product plus minus a one product h m n minus one a two a n plus minus summation of k of H M K A one to A K times H M N minus K of A K plus one A N. So here I just ignore the sign, just plus minus, because uh, M N was just a sum of plus minus of M N for all trees and this this formula comes from this expression so why, why is this so each tree has initially n vertices and one possibility is just to take the first first like this and then the remaining n minus one. Yeah, so this is ah sorry sorry sorry. Maybe F first sorry. This is the last sorry. First n minus one is some somehow. Together and then the lastly, the last vertex come here, and this is H. So the first n minus one is just uh, contracted like this, and then take H, and then product with a n like this. So this is so the, the first time correspond to such tree, and this one is just opposite. So this one 
uh, just somehow like this, and the, the H like this. So this is the second part. And these are just intermediate. So some first K is all together, and then H, and then the remaining N minus K come together, and then H, and product. Yeah. So there are three types of trees, and each of them correspond to each term. And then I use uh, this formula to calculate the inner product. So this, in this calculation, I'd like to omit the integration and the sign. So omit, let's omit integration and the plus minus. And then the calculation become as follows. So, so m n minus 1, a1, an, an minus 1 is equal to h m minus 2, a1, a n minus two, a n minus one, a n plus a one, h n minus two, a two, a n minus one, a n a n plus h m k, a one, a k, h m n minus k. A in uh, K plus one A N and A N A N minus one A N N minus one minus K. So this is just replaced in the fa first part. And then I use again the same formula, H M minus two A one A N minus two and M two A N minus one A N. So M remember M two is just a product. Plus A one H M minus two A two A N minus one. A N plus A oh, sorry plus M K A one A K hmm? no. M N minus K A K plus one A N minus one A N plus this is summation summation H hmm? sorry H H M K A one a k, a k plus one, m n minus k minus one, a k plus two, a n plus <coughs> summation h m k a one a k H M L A K plus one A K plus L and H N minus uh, M L minus K minus L A K plus L plus one A N. 
So the so the first term is just replaced by here. So this is the same. Second term also here, but the third term is uh, replaced using the same formula like here. So do, do you see this? So this a n is included here. And sometimes this a k plus 1 is to be excluded. And then this is just the remaining term. So this is the. But now the expression is almost symmetric. Yeah. So, for example, this term is completely symmetric. And this term is almost symmetric. But, but there is important formula. So, so A H B is equal to H A B. Somehow the homotopy operator can be moved. So if I move this to this, then uh, so for example, this is also completely symmetric. And this one, so here there is no H. But if, if, I, if I replace the right hand side of the proposition, then H will become here. And this H will become here. Ah, here. And this H move to here. And then, so in this way, if I use this formula, then so both hands are equal up to sign. And then the sign convention is uh, very complicated, so I just uh, omitted it. But uh, yeah, so, yeah. And this kind of thing works well. So this is the cyclic equality. Yeah. Now, Finally, I define superpotential. So superpotential is the following. W is equal to N3 and I1 to IN and 1 over N A I1 I N E I one E I N. This is inside Q hat modulo relation. And this relation is that the, if you cyclic perm permutation, they are equal. So I ignore the difference of cyclic perm permutation. And where P E I J is equal to source of E I J plus one and T E I N is equal to S E I zero. So so there are vertices and the edges mm, come like this. So there, there should be uh, circle. Otherwise, uh, there is zero. So the product is just zero. So this is superpotential. And what is cyclic derivative? So cyclic derivative is just a usual derivative, but slightly different. So this is equal to a i 1 i n minus 1. I n e i dash n minus one e i dash one and so i n i one is permuted to i i n minus one dash i one dash. So if if there is such permuta cyclic permutation, then the 
this term appears in the derivative, ice derivative. So the, since this is non-commutative world, so derivation is not the, not the same as in the as usual, but it is only slightly different. So how to how to how to differentiate ice term? So first by cyclic permutation you you put i to the top and then delete. So this is uh, cyclic derivation. And then the uh, relation idea is so this is m n star of so e i star so for so all i and this is equal to d i yeah so so the relation idea is given by the cyclic derivation is of one potential so in the Calabria threefold case the quiver with relation is determined by just one superpotential. So this is a very special property of the Calabria threefold. And the physicists found first this, the existence of such superpotential. Okay, so finally, so I, I just uh, uh, finished this lecture with uh, uh, a remark that actually I wanted to prove the following kind of statement. So actually this relation I is generated by non-commutative polynomials. So if, we, if they are polynomials, so there, there is no infinite, infinite series, just to, just to finite, okay, then the, the convergence is uh, trivial in this case. At least when x is like pn, or more generally, if x has so called full strong exceptional collection. So, this is the terminology of the derived category. But uh, the, the typical case is projective space or Grassmannian or quadric. Yeah. The, these varieties have full strong exceptional collections. And the, at least in these cases, I should be uh, algebraic. So this is algebraic. But anyway, if, if, if I consider commutative deformation, then the coherent chief is parameterized by quote scheme. So modular space is always algebraic. So in the commutative world, always algebraic. So it, it can be always algebraic, even non-commutative deformation, but I don't know. And that actually, there is uh, some proof, but uh, still I, I cannot understand the proof of this uh, in the case of PN. So I, I, so I, I could not explain this in, in this lecture. So, the, so, so thank you very much. This is the end, end of the talk. Thank you very much for the so Ah, this is, uh, so I, I have to consider derived category of coherent sheet of the, of the variety. And then there, there are some E1 to maybe E something, EN, and they they are all exceptional object, and so in the sense that home, home I of E J E K is so so zero if I is positive or negative. So if if I is not zero. And or if j is bigger than k, like this, and also if it is k, if j is k. So I, I don't mention 
home zero of e j e k which is j is smaller than k. So th this is uh, this this case is not determined by this condition. This is a, a free free thing, but the condition is that this this is for first strong exceptional collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm.